How's it going, my Ruby friends? Another week, another episode of Ruby Rewind, and another video for me to make covering that episode of Ruby Rewind, talking about it with you guys, theorizing on what's to come in the next chapter, and all that jazz. Now, before we get into all of that, though, let me just take a moment to obviously say, spoiler alert, not just for chapter three, but also for Ruby Volume 6, chapter two. If you haven't seen chapter two, you might not want to watch this video unless you don't mind being spoiled, because we're going to talk a little bit about chapter two, and also what's to come in chapter three. So, with that said, um, let's get into the discussion here. And some of you might have already seen the preview if you're watching Ruby Rewind earlier today. But if you haven't, I will give you the rundown of what occurred in that episode. Of course, once again, like I said last time, out of respect for Rooster Teeth, I am not going to show the clip. But I will talk about the clip with you guys, insight discussion, look in the comments below, talk with you guys and all that stuff, and show a few of the pictures up above so you can get some more direction of what I'm talking about. That said, the clip is only about 10 seconds long, so there's not too much to show. But there's a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. This clip actually continues where we left off in Volume 6, Chapter 2, where uh, Jin, I was going to say the genie, where Jin is showing us and telling us the story of Salem and who knows what else. Obviously, all we know so far is it's telling a story of Salem. We do get some more exposition in this preview, though. Word for word, here's what Jin says in this preview before it cuts off. Locked away by her cruel father, Salem was a girl who desired but one thing, freedom. She lived in a time where kings and their kingdoms were plentiful, where men and women were capable of greatness, and magic was a gift from the gods that all could wield. And yet there she sat within her tower. So pretty crazy stuff. Honestly, there is so many different directions for Rooster Teeth to take the show at this point and for, to take like Ozpin and Salem and the characters and the whole world regarding magic and the relics and the gods that there's just too many theories out there, honestly. There's so many theories, it's like shooting darts at the dartboard, right? Some of them are gonna miss, maybe some of them will hit, but really it's just so up in the air right now. And that's fun, it's good, but it's also bad a little bit. With a little bit more direction, we can make more concrete theories. With a little bit more evidence, we can make better theories. Right now, we can make a lot of theories, but a lot of them, like I said, to do a different reference, it'll be like taking shots in the dark, right? So let's discuss that stuff a little bit. Again, it's going to be pretty open though. But what we can take away for sure, that's not a theory, is that magic was plentiful back then and everybody could wield it. Now, if we look at current Remnant, that's not the case anymore. Magic is something that most people don't even know exists. And if you tell them that magic exists, they're going to be like looking at you like you're crazy. There is semblance, there's aura. But apparently there's no magic, except Ozpin. Ozpin is the only entity that we've seen in the show to still have access to magic, although his access to it is greatly diminished. He gave, well, actually, I take that back. The Maidens also have access to magic, of course. <laughs> Let me correct myself on that. So he gave his magic to the four Maidens. So the only entities that are confirmed to still have magic is the Maidens and the Ozpin. Now, the Maidens, of course, still have their semblance and their aura, for the most part, um, why do I say for the most part? Well, hypothetically, let's say Salem ended up being a maiden. If she's grim, she probably can't use her semblance anymore because she can't access her aura. The reason Cinder still can is because she's not fully grim. Only part of her is grim. But if you're entirely grim and you don't have aura, I don't see how you could use your semblance being the fact that semblance is tied to aura. So the only people that we know, the only entities that we know that are confirmed to still have magic, the four maidens in Ozpin. So what happened? Why is magic gone from Remnant? It's very interesting, and that's one of the things we can theorize on. But let's also take a look at um, the rest of this text here. So, locked away by her cruel father, Salem was a girl who deserved but one thing, freedom. So, obviously, someone could easily make a theory saying that the father was Ozpin. Maybe he is, but that seems a bit too obvious. Um, they might go that route, but I think there could be more interesting approaches. Um... Continuing on with the text, she lived in a time where kings and their kingdoms were plentiful. Perhaps her father was not Ozpin. Perhaps he was just some kind of tyrannical king. Perhaps Ozpin led his kingdom at war against the king who was locking Salem up. And then he was able to free Salem, and that's how they met. That seems pretty possible to me. Um, when men and women were capable of greatness and magic was a gift from the gods that all could wield. We already talked about the magic part. And then it was stated that... And yet there she sat within her tower. And we can see in the preview that she's harnessing this crazy looking magic, like orbs that almost look like stars or planets hovering around her hand. But she can't use that to get out, apparently. Why is that? Well, maybe there's anti-magic seals or something on the door. Maybe her tower is in a different dimension or something like that. Something is preventing her, preventing her from, uh, 
from getting out of the tower. And I don't think it's just the king saying, don't leave, you know? Um, maybe that's the case, maybe, but it seems like there's a bit more to, to it than that. But it's really interesting, like, what happened to the magic in Remnant? Perhaps it's tied to the moon, and when the moon was shattered, people lost their connection to magic? That seems possible. Um, perhaps Ozpin took the magic for himself, but at the same time, Ozpin gave his magic away to the maidens, almost all of his magic. So that doesn't seem very likely, unless Ozpin really was this evil dude back then, and he went on to try to redeem himself over the years. That seems pretty possible, you know, people make mistakes. I wouldn't be surprised one way or the other if Ozpin ended up being the evil father, if he ended up being a king that freed Salem, if he ended up being a lover of Salem, if he ended up being the court. Perhaps he was the court mage. This actually seems like a pretty good theory, actually, as I'm thinking about it right now. Perhaps Ozpin was a part of that same kingdom. Perhaps he was the court wizard, rather, of this tyrannical king who locked Salem up. And perhaps Ozpin decided to free her, and they rebelled against that king. But something obviously went wrong. Something ended up making Salem grim, it looks like. We don't have confirmation, like, it's not 100% confirmed that Salem is part Grimm, but given her appearance and her her control over Grimm to an extent, it seems like she's obviously part Grimm. Um, just taking note of the facts, you know, the facts is we don't know that for sure, but it definitely seems like it is leaning that way. So what do you guys think about this? This is all very interesting stuff. Um, I haven't spent much time theorizing on this. I'm pretty much recording this right from watching the episode. So I don't have my thoughts gathered like super well right now. I just really wanted to make this video, see what you guys would have to say in the comments and uh, talk to you guys about it there. Um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over that text one more time. Maybe something else will pop up in my mind. So um, Jin explains as the story continues, locked away by her cruel father, Salem was a girl who desired but one thing, freedom. She lived in a time where kings and their kingdoms were plentiful, when men and women were capable of greatness, and magic was a gift from the gods that all could wield. And yet there she sat within her tower. So it also makes the gods look a little bit more generous um, than they're painted out currently. Like I always said, with the current knowledge of Remnant, way before this preview, you know, back in volume four, when we got the original story of the gods from Crow by the campfire, it sounded like the gods were very childish and they didn't really have a connection to humanity. They were very disconnected, just using their powers to kind of entertain each other. The God of Light would make creations, the God of Destruction would destroy it, God of Light would create it again, God of Destruction would destroy it again, and they kept going at it until eventually they unified to create humanity out of both light and dark. Humanity is flawed in Remnant. I'm not saying it's not flawed in real life, but I'm not gonna get into that. In Remnant though, it is definitely flawed. Humans are made from both dark and light. And perhaps someone could argue that that makes them not flawed. Maybe if they were only made from light or only dark, that would make them flawed. Perhaps having that balance is better, but the fact is that balance is constantly shifting. Some people fall too much to the dark side. Some people fall too much to the light side. An example of that would be Ironwood. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He thinks he's causing justice. He thinks he's protecting people, but a lot of the time he goes so far that it is becoming more and more like a dictatorship. So that's an example of, you know, too much light. You need to have that balance there. So it's all very interesting. It's all very interesting. Um, someone else pointed out in the Discord that the mirror in the tower kind of looks like the uh, door, the Spring Maiden's door um, to the vault, the vault of the Spring Maiden. It kind of looks like that, which seemed like it was an alternate dimension. So perhaps the relic is sealed away in an alternate dimension. Perhaps it's in the past where these kingdoms were still thriving. Perhaps Ozpin was able to access that, uh, access the past or some alternate dimension or, or a cutout of that time period to make an alternate dimension to seal the relic away because after all if the relic attracts grim it makes sense that you would seal it away in a place that wouldn't really attract grim not just literally at an academy but sealed into a different dimension at an academy that's even safer it's like putting multiple locks on the door right why would you just want one lock on a door if you could put more than one without it you know it just makes sense it just makes sense so these are some of the theories that i'm coming up with at the moment um I can't wait for chapter three, as you guys probably can't as well. That'll be coming out on Saturday. And uh, if you haven't joined the Discord, definitely consider joining the Discord down below. We're at almost 1,100 members now. As far as I know, it's the most active public Ruby Discord out there. And we cover other stuff besides Ruby. Sometimes we talk about life and other anime and manga. So I would highly recommend you to join if you're into Ruby or any of that other stuff. On that same note, if you would like to support the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon page. There are multiple tiers that you can subscribe to, and it would obviously help the channel out a lot. So take a look at the Patreon page if you want. Some of the rewards include early access to reactions, 
Those are including Ruby and some other shows like Goblin Slayer, SSS Gridman, basically the kind of stuff I've been streaming right now. Um, but that's about it for this video, guys. I appreciate your time and your support. Again, leave me your thoughts down below on these theories and any theories that you would think of as well. I'll take a look, I'll get back to you, and I will see you next time.